Hello and welcome to the Empowered Couples Podcast where here you get modern, non-boring relationship advice for you and your partner to communicate like pros, fight smarter, and stay on the same team no matter the challenge that you face. I'm one of your hosts, Aaron Freeman. And I'm Jocelyn Freeman, but you all just know us as the Freemans. And this episode is about, that wasn't my intention. The difference between arguing for intent versus understanding impact. Okay, this is one we've definitely caught ourselves doing. Have you ever tried to validate your position during an argument by saying, oh, but that wasn't my intention. No, 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 that, that is, that's not what I was trying to do. I'm so, that's not it. And then have you noticed that that literally has never helped ever? <laughs> so if you notice that you've done it, you need to acknowledge that's actually never helped at all. At least we'll say this in that moment mm-hmm. because it's just not the right time for this. It's not the right time to explain intent. And we have to be honest here. It does show that you need to better understand the big difference between your intent and the impact. Now, before we define the difference and really break it down, an example from a recent session I think will be helpful. So we were working with the couple through a frustration that's really been like creating some recurring tense conversations or even leading to an argument about work versus family time. And he was arguing that he was working so hard, even sometimes on what was supposed to be just like a family day, like a Saturday or a Sunday. And he kept saying, my intention is to create, you know, security for us. That's why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. You're totally misunderstanding. And she was saying, okay, but the impact is that I feel unprioritized. I feel unloved. I feel lonely even. And they kept going back and forth and he kept going, but that's not my intention. I'm doing this for our family. I'm working so hard for us. I want us to have security. And she's like, I love all that. Thank you. You know, of course a partner appreciates that. However, the impact, the unintended impact is she felt lonely. She felt unloved from that even. Mm -hmm. So notice, right? It doesn't mean you have a bad intention, you know? So let's say your partner's saying, well, but this is how it feels to me. You could be like, no, 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 I'm not malicious. I'm not a bad person. I wasn't trying to make you feel bad. Even more so. I know it doesn't make sense that you would take it that way because I didn't intend that. Mm -hmm. So this is the analogy I give at the workshop. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to add this in here because I personally think (laughs) that that is He loves analogies. And I guess you have to like golf a little bit. (laughs) But think about this. Okay, so say you're golfing and you hit the ball into someone's yard. Okay, so now you take your little cart over and you go stand over the ball and you try to argue and explain to the ball it was not your intention for it to land here. Is the ball going to say, oh my gosh, shoot, you are right. I didn't realize at the time what your intent was. Let me pick myself up and I'm going to move over into the middle of the fairway because I now understand what your intent was. No. No. (laughs) It doesn't matter. Of course, it doesn't matter to the ball, but it doesn't matter right now to explain your intent because the action that you took produced this result and how you executed your swing, no matter your intention to swing perfect and hit it in the middle, the impact of your execution is you're now in someone's yard next to their barbecue. So I know that analogy, which I think is really clear. It is about an inanimate object. And so you could say, okay, Freemans, I get that about the ball. However, we're human beings, right? Now that actually makes it even a little bit more complicated because you are two different people. And so you can, as one person say, okay, but here was my intention. You know, you shouldn't feel that way because of this. Well, you are taking action from your own perception, your own view, your own self. And that's different than your partner who's a different human being and they have a different emotional state going on. They're going through different things. They have their own view. And so you're now, it's even more complicated because you're two different humans and you're going to experience different, or actually you could experience the same event differently, right? So it's like you could be in the same scenario. One person's not affected and the other person is. 
because you're two different human beings. And that's part of what even leads to conflict escalating is this, you know, battle for no, 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 that that's not it. And this is what I was trying to do. And now it's escalating and it's triggering the other person. I feel invalidated and it only becomes bigger. And if that's resonating, by the way, I just want to quickly interject here to have you pause and actually go register for our free marriage web class that's happening on November 3rd. So if you're hearing this the week that the episode comes out, it's going to be like in a day or two. And I think there's now almost 700 couples registered. I mean, the topic is really regis- you know, resonating with people. So go to onlinecouplesworkshops.com and get signed up for the Fight Smarter. It's really about healthy conflict, handling emotional triggers, how to repair things. And yes, can't wait to see you there November 3rd. It's onlinecouplesworkshops.com. And we're doing this topic ahead of the web class because this is a major misunderstanding and major mis-execution on many partners' parts Mm -hmm. trying to argue for intent over just understanding the impact. So let's just define these two. Mm -hmm. First of all, intent is an aim or determination to act in a certain way towards maybe an intended goal, Mm -hmm. where impact is having an effect on someone or something else Mm -hmm. so a part of what you really have to get especially when emotions are going especially when you feel maybe even that your partner is blaming you or they feel escalating their emotion you just have to admit to yourself that because you intend something does not mean that that is how the impact lands yeah you're not going to be 100 percent accurate to your intention Mm -hmm. and the impact or result. And when we say it like that, it seems obvious because how many other things do you intend in your life? Mm -hmm. Like you intend on your job or how often do you intend that your your kids turn out and act a certain way? (laughs) Does your intention, is that the main thing that has them turn out that way? Mm -mm. No, and it's not just, you know, because your kids are going to do whatever they're going to do per their personality. When we were talking about conflict with your romantic partner you have to pause and understand let them share with you the impact that your actions had no matter if that was the intention or not and that is a key piece that's going to either have you move towards repair or have this escalate leading to more either invalidation lack of understanding and so on. It brings to mind even a scene from a show that we got into this week where one of the family members was trying to make the other person laugh. And and they were, you know, cracking jokes and trying to be funny and trying to be light. And the other person really took it personally and felt invalidated and felt misunderstood. And so it's a great example of where, you know, they were trying to make the other person laugh. That's a quote unquote good thing, right? That's not, again, malintent. That's, they're not trying to be a bad person, but on the receiving end, the person felt as though they were being undermined and that what they were going through was being invalidated. So again, I just like, I think those examples are helpful. We're not saying you have a bad intention by any means. You can have the best of intentions and it still creates another impact. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting too to think about is when you argue for your intention, who's the focus on? You. You're bringing the focus on you, which leaves the other person feeling unresolved. Okay, I hear all about you. I hear all about your intention, but what about me? I'm the one that's feeling something here. Whereas when you're acknowledging the impact, the focus is on them, which makes them feel validated. And you're always going to have more influence on someone when you put them first. Like that's an influence tactic. We actually love this FBI uh, negotiator. He actually negotiated for like hostage situations. uh, I mean, for some of the most intense things going on in the world, he was the go-to FBI negotiator. Chris Voss. Yeah, Chris Voss. And he always said, you can't influence someone if you don't understand them first. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't understand their perspective, what's impacting them, what's influencing them, you really will have no leverage. You'll have no influence over this person. And we have had conversations with couples very recently that when they try to bring up something that is challenging or is is even important to them, then their partner might share, well, that wasn't my intent. 
And immediately they're taken off guard because it's like, well, wait a second. I'm trying to openly share with you, which Mm -hmm. might feel vulnerable. And all of a sudden, how did this conversation turn around to be about you? And that always creates a certain defensiveness. And that's always going to create a certain unfairness or not feeling important. Because when you shift the conversation, especially when someone, your partner is trying to share with you, Mm -hmm. when you share your intent, it's now about you. Yes. And we're going to share at the end here. It's not that you will not have the opportunity to share your intent. Mm -hmm. It's just not yet the right time. Mm -hmm. Acknowledging impact has to be the first thing you do when there is emotion, when there is a conflict, when there is an argument. So it's like you have to be able to put your desire and your need to share what your intent was on the back burner, at least initially, Mm -hmm. to say, okay, I know for me it wasn't my intent. And okay, I took some actions. I thought they were right for me, but clearly they had an unintended outcome. And these are all things I'm saying to myself. And truly listen to your partner about, okay, what is the impact? And this is not something you guys, we do perfectly, by the way. There are times where we actually catch ourselves saying, oh my gosh, okay, we're actually arguing for the whole intent thing. And we try to remind each other of this. And we've had many situations, even with family. To be honest, I was arguing for intention today with a family member of mine. And Aaron was going, Mm. hey, you have to acknowledge the impact. And I was like, (laughs) you know, like, (laughs) why? And so this isn't... (laughs) Why do I have to? (laughs) This isn't something we're like, perfect. That's not the goal, right? This podcast is never about you becoming this perfect human being who who never messes up, who, who gets it right all the time. We aren't. And we live and breathe this. You guys, all we talk about is relationships and communication. And we still are human sometimes and get this quote unquote wrong. So I do want to speak to the question that's on the table for the listener. And that's, well, when do I get to clarify my intention? Yeah, Freemans, when do I get to explain it? The Jocelyn will answer that for you. What I have to point out here is... Just consider for a moment why you need that so badly. Like why you need to explain it? Why is it burning inside <laughs> of you? And it's almost like it does take you away from listening. And I've, I've had that experience before. Inside, I almost feel my chest is burning <laughs> because I'm like, I have to share so that she understands what my intent was (laughs) and it's just you really got to consider what is going on inside of you you could label it an ego or part of your personality or just this why is this desire there does it really need to be Mm -hmm. and we're not like saying this is the only specific reason but if you start to think about it it probably has something to do with that you want them to see you in a positive light. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know what the intention was. It was taken a different way. Your action from the best of places didn't land how you want. And in one sense, you probably feel bad. Like maybe you, in a sense, feel guilty about that, about making them feel bad or feeling hurt or whatever. And so in a sense, you do want to alleviate the feeling of guilt. But I think also, I mean, you want to be seen by your partner or by anyone in life as being a good person, mm-hmm. as being a, a moral person, as being a thoughtful person. And it's just this innate need to see you in the right light, to see you in the light you intended, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. I think that's so true. You know, you do want to be seen as a, even a not bad person, right? It's yeah. being seen as a good person, but I definitely don't want to see be seen as a bad person. So going back to the question, when do I get to clarify my intention? I think it really falls into one of two places. Number one, really about a timing factor or second, maybe not at all. So let me address the timing factor first. When it's really about the other person, your partner, and they're sharing the impact on them and you're validating them, hopefully using active listening, which we've talked about in other content, right? So you're, you're listening to them, you're keeping the focus on them, you're validating, affirming, I hear you, you know, and then expressing some degree of either remorse or empathy for it. So that's the main focus. Now, it may be in another conversation later. You don't want to like follow up the empathy and the remorse with, 
but can I explain, right? That may not be the right time. It might not be best. You might actually negate all the positive progress of validating them if you bring it up right then. So maybe later on you can circle back and say, hey, can I share a little bit more about my intention from before? I just, I feel like there's part of me that I want to explain and that'll just help me. Right. Mm-hmm. So you want to check with them. I think that's respectful and it actually gives them an opportunity. There's been times where you do that with me. Like I'll feel understood, you know, like you get the impact on me and then you'll go, can I just explain a little bit about my intention of why I did that? And sometimes I'm a yes and sometimes I'm not. Mm-hmm. Right. But then I get a chance to like, am I open to it right then? Yeah. So I want to be mm-hmm. clear that that's the main point. You mm-hmm. can ask in this conversation You've acknowledged the impact. So you can say right then, hey, I really would like to explain, though, my intention. And then you just have to honor whether they are ready for it at that moment or not. And then you can come back later Mm -hmm. if you honestly feel like you need to. I'm not sure if most people would feel the need sometime later because I think that initial ego-ish personality of wanting to be seen in a good light that you're a good person, I think that's probably going to show up more momentarily. And then if your partner does feel understood, they're they're validated, the impact is understood, and you say, okay, let's come back to this conversation later, you may find that when it comes to later, you're like, oh, you're already connected, your partner's appreciative of you, got the impact. And you might not feel that strong need to have to now explain yourself again. Yeah, that's true. So that's a timing factor. And then the other place would be that it doesn't need to be explained at all. And that's where you need to ask yourself, kind of going back to what you said earlier, Aaron, of what part of you really needs to explain it? And really, like, is it necessary? So that's really where it takes just being really a conscious person and go like, what part of me needs to explain this? Can I just let it go? Can I just surrender into this and and really have it not be about me and that's really a powerful opportunity right then to say you know what actually I don't need to explain this at all you know what it let me just keep the focus on them so only you are going to really know and I think it's all about practice and uh, different scenarios Mm -hmm. and the last thing I'll just invite you the listener into just check in that what if you were certain and you knew for yourself that you set out with the best intent and acknowledging that you know that you are, let's say, a good person, a thoughtful person, an intentional person. At the end of the day, isn't that probably the main thing? It's like when you're trying to explain or convince someone that you're good and you have the best intent, well, maybe that is a signal for you to look within yourself. Are you not thinking that you're acting from the best intent or is there some some personal work, personal development for you to do within yourself. Because I think at the end of all of it, if you're certain within yourself on where your actions come from, that you came from good intent, Mm -hmm. that should give you enough peace. That should give you enough being settled or being grounded energy that that's the best place for you to then listen to other people. I can be completely settled. I knew what my intent was. And my energy, my attitude can be super open to hearing from anyone in my life, Mm. let alone my partner, about what the impact was. And I'm in a much better place to empathize, to sympathize, to understand, to hear them out because I'm not I'm not shaken. Mm -hmm. I'm not wobbly within myself. And so just an invitation really for all of us to say, is this maybe just a place where I need to get more grounded and certain within myself and where I'm acting from? You have gotten really great at that, by the way. That Um, has been a big journey for you over the years and it's inspiring. So with all of this said, right, the summary is you can have the most positive of intention and still have a different impact on your partner. And it really is about validating them, them feeling understood. And that's going to de-escalate things. That's going to really lead to more of a constructive conversation. So we really hope that this was enlightening. Make sure you are registered for the marriage web class on November 3rd onlinecouplesworkshops.com and we're going to be really going into the three stages of conflict before, during, and after. Super excited to see you all on there. With that, we love you all. Thank you for the reviews, by the way. We've been seeing more of those. The five-star reviews really, really help us get the word out there more. So if you can take two and a half seconds, give us a rating on whichever platform you're listening on. Maybe write a sentence or two. Uh, It really encourages us to keep going. So with that, we love you all and we'll talk to you on the next episode.